You want to make sure that you avoid this one very big mistake when you're building your Sovereign. Hey everyone, Derby here, and welcome back to another Battle Pirates video. As I get started, I do want to remind you that all my builds are available in my builds document, which you can access through the link in the YouTube description. Just copy and paste this hash code, go to your ship shipyard, click share, and paste it in, and you'll get the build for all of my ships, and I'm working on turrets as well. Thanks to my channel members for their support. You'll find out more about that at the end of the video. Let's go ahead and jump into the build. I am showing this on a U3 Sovereign. I do have three ships built, two are U3, one's at U1. My plan for the first raid is to get four ships, including the flag, up to U3. The flagship might only be U2 in case I want to start the raid on the first day. And I'll use some tokens to get one of those ones up to X1 for free on the first day, not building the fifth ship. Let's go ahead and get into it. The Sovereign is going to be pretty interesting to drive. You'll notice that there are some special abilities that are going to be pretty uh, wacky to say the least. The Royal Seal Speed Boost is the one I'm talking about right here. If you stay completely stationary, you gain a Speed Boost and can kind of blitz through the Heavy Fire and Arc or avoid corrosive damage. This is going to mean this hole is going to take a lot of driving to get done right, but also the right build. By the way, the upgrade stats look pretty decent. U1 just unlocks the heavy weapon, which is pretty standard. You get a bunch of survival, which is nice at U2, as well as accuracy, only helpful against ships. You have 100% accuracy against buildings, and then more survival at U3, which is probably worth less than the U2 survival, then a little bit of penetrative reload and building damage. By the way, this plus 25% is not multiplying onto what you have already. It's just modifying the base stats, so it turns it from... Uh, penetrative reload 25%, it just changes this stat to 125 from 100. With the understanding of what the ship brings, let's go ahead and get into the build. By the way, you can use the YouTube chapters features to jump through and find which section is important to you. The first thing I'll be doing is building a damage ship, and the mistake I'm talking about is not relevant to the damage ship. I'm foreshadowing that a little bit here. Now what you want to do is use the limited weapon if you have that. This is the Regal Missile, the tier 12.5 missile, has the highest damage out of anything you'd think to put on this one, and does have a few interesting stats, including the Salvo of 5, which will affect your reload time and damage per second calculations, which we will jump into when talking about the Liquid Fire Warhead Special. In any case, for your jam damage ships, you want to use as many of these as possible, because that will just be the most helpful. By the way, don't uh, count the build time here. I have specials that are on this one, and I'm in refit mode. In any case, you want to use the eight regular weapons for sure. Notice that the range here is 80. For the limited weapon, of course, you want to use the limited one from the Forsaken Mission for 8 million points, which is a little bit. Same range, of course, wish it with a higher damage. And the reload time here is 6 seconds compared to the regular one, which also has a reload time of 6. Although note that the salvo delay will not be quite as relevant on the heavy missile here. Of course, it's not affected by reload bonuses, so it's not going to fire all that often. Let's get into the specials now at this point. The first special is probably the engine. If you have it, put on the new engine, which is under limited, the mandate engine. If not, some of the older ones, the tier 12 engine, I believe TSM did that one, gives you a very, very tiny amount less survival. So if you have it, use the best one. If not, the mandate one will be a good second option for you. I do like to give secondary options for people because you don't all have all the newest tech. If you don't have the limited weapons, for example, just use the regular one. You will get it in the TLC when it comes out later this week in any case. Your second special here is going to be the Wreath Targeting Console. This is a limited weapon that will give you 115% penetrative damage. Something like the Hydrophobic Warheads might be a good second option. It will give the same stats. It will just be slightly worse across all the categories other than projectile speed. I like this one. It's not the highest damage special out there, but the projectile speed is nice and the accuracy is going to be nice for the few ships that are in this target. Special slot number three here is going to be another limited special, and that is Penetrative Battery 3. This is not going to be on all five ships, by the way, just warning you in advance. But this just gives you building and penetrative damage. From my experience, about two-thirds of the target is a building. Might be a little bit more in some scenarios. 
Jumping over to the regular blueprint specials, the Crown Thrusters is one that I'm going to put on all my ships, not because it's the best in any one category here, because it gives you evade, which is going to be decent against one turret in particular, some combat speed, which makes it hard to take off of some ships, countermeasure reload, which is pretty nice, and the penetrative damage plus 55% is good. I suppose if you wanted to replace it with a pure penetrative damage special and you could find one, I would consider that an okay build as well. You'll notice that this particular ship has no countermeasures, so we don't need to put on something like Proterio's Defense System, so we're going to put on Obsession Missile Sensors, and a little bit more on that in a second. But this is going to give you projectile speed, penetrative damage, building damage, and of course, wall damage doesn't matter, and it's going to be a pretty good special for you. Now, jumping over to the last special here, there are not a ton of options that you might have. You could think about a bunch of all kinds of creative things, but we are going to go back over to Limited and throw on the Star Tracker Guiding System, which is Assault or Garrison. It gives you Penetrative Range, which is incredibly important. You need a Penetrative Range special on here, so you're not taking this one off any of your ships. And there are the specials that you want to put on your Sovereign for at least three of the builds or three of the holds in the fleet, I should say. The armor, it's a pretty easy choice. I'm just going to throw in two of two of the corrosive and the missile. I think more of the incoming damage is going to be corrosive, but you're likely going to be able to outrun a lot of that with the special hull ability I talked about at the beginning. If I had to guess, I might lean corrosive, but the missile is generally the one that is guaranteed damage. Maybe the flagship needs more missile armor. I will withhold a verdict on the flag until we see what that looks like, and especially if King Killer is going to be at play giving higher armor points on the flag and what the targets are going to be look like. So what you are looking at right here is my damage setup for the Sovereign. I do want to note that I did consider briefly using something differently than Obsession Missile Sensors, which is the Liquid Fire Warheads. What you're looking at here is a little bit of a stack comparison between a build using Obsession Missile Sensors and one using Liquid Fire Warheads. Based on all the stats, and if you count the extra re re reload from your salvo of 5.2 seconds each, you can get up to the following damage per second and building damage per second, which I think is the important bit. Of course, the reload time is the exact same on these, so it's not really going to matter if you count damage or damage per second. What you'll see is that switching from Obsession Missile Sensors to Liquid Fire Warheads is going to drop your regular damage by about 33%, but it's going to increase your building damage by a ton. I'm expecting, based on the VSP target as I mentioned earlier, roughly two-thirds of the uh, target was a building, so building damage might be more important to rely on. If you consider this, you'll end up doing uh, roughly 40 million damage to uh, the target in combined on an average, and 49 million by using the Liquid Fire Warheads. So you're probably going to do slightly better using this new special, Liquid Fire Warheads, which is both a garrison and an assault special. I'm not going to use it, however, because I still think ships are going to be important to kill, and more importantly, I don't actually have any of these available. All five that I have are on my Triari. I don't really want to take them off to put them on this fleet. That is an option for you if you would like. I don't really plan on doing that. If it was universally better on damage as well as building damage, I would definitely do that. However, because it's not better against ships, I'm going to remain as is with the Obsession Missile Sensors. Let's go ahead and switch back to the ship build. So that was the damage ship build as I had mentioned. Let's go ahead and talk about countermeasures as well as the number one mistake players are going to make. The first thing that you're going to do when you go into these VXP targets from last week, who reads Kixai's strategy guide, is you're going to see, oh, Kixai has some UAVs in the target. The gel right here says it counters mortar and UAV. Your missile defense says it counters missile and UAV. You could even go look at countermeasures in your regular tab and say sprint counters missile rocket and UAV. However, Kixai loves to cheat and do really, really sneaky things. They tag their UAVs in this particular target and say, you have 100% evasion against anti-mortar damage types and 100% evasion against anti-missile damage types. Therefore, MDS-3s are not going to fire and gales are not going to fire. If I can't be more clear, do not use gales or MDS-3s in this target. Instead, you need to use, use something that has the damage type of countermeasure, which is right here as the sprints. This is really the only option for you, and you need to use this in the target. 
You may wonder, okay, how many of them should I be using? My recommendation for you is going to be four. I think three is enough to deal with one turret at a time, which I have seen a few other people agreeing with. And as we tested on the Hefe show, it definitely was as well. Notice that the salvo here is two, which means with just three, you can shoot it six times, six missiles before you have to reload, or six UAVs before you have to reload. And that's great. Uh, because you can you can deal with one turret there completely before going into your reload time, which is going to be three seconds divided by four because you're ranked up, and then divided by one plus your countermeasure reload. In any case, you're going to be able to deal with one turret uh, for every three sprints you have before you even start reloading. I think that if I do four, I can probably deal with two perfectly fine and not even have to get into the issue of needing to have two entire ships. I don't want to lose any more weapons than this because, well, um, I don't want to lose too much damage. I will also note that it is important to remember that the sprints are only going to shoot at each missile once. Even if they miss, they're not going to shoot at it a second time. So on the 70% accuracy here, you should hit 70% if they have no evade on there, which they probably do. And if you miss, you're not going to fire at it again, so there's no use in putting on more than you need to. For that reason, this is my weapon setup for my countermeasure build. Now, we of course do need a special on here for the countermeasures, and I'm going to recommend you take off Penetrator Battery 3. You lose a little bit of defense-related things, but I don't want to take off this special because it gives you projectile speed, and I don't want to take off the Obsession Missile Sensors because also it does give you projectile speed too. I guess I could take off this one, then I'm losing combat speed. I don't want to take off my range extender and definitely not my engine, which means we're taking off Penetrator Battery 3 and putting on a countermeasure reload special. Materials Defense System is the best one for this because it does give you a little bit uh, uh, it, some benefits. You have the 10k splash damage reduction here, which I suppose is pretty decent, and the Penetrative Reload is nice. If you flip over, another option for you could actually be a limited one, which is the Hydro Atomizer Nozzle. It has the same countermeasure stats, but it doesn't actually give you any good uh, extra things like the penetrative reload. So if you don't happen to have materials for some reason, there that's the other option for you. So what you're seeing on screen now is going to be my countermeasure ship, and there are my two different setups I'm going to run. I will hold judgment, withhold judgment on the flagship until we have a chance to see what that looks like, what the stats look like. It's probably going to be a regular damage setup. I don't see the need for an extreme high evade tank this round, although Kicks I could always change stuff on this. I want to give a huge thank you to the channel members whose names appear on the end screen now. They're helping keep the channel running and are why I can provide things like the build stock. If you find that doc or these videos helpful and want to support, you can click the join button on YouTube. As always, and until next time, this is Derpy signing out, helping you be a better pirate.